Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches hydro power projects worth over 11000 crore rupees in Mandi, Himachal Pradesh. Health Ministry briefs the Election Commission about COVID-19 situation ahead of polls in five states. Election Commission to be on a three-day visit to Uttar Pradesh beginning tomorrow. Children between 15 to 18 can register on COVIN for vaccination from January 1st. Over 141 crore 73 lakh vaccine doses administered under nationwide vaccination drive so far. Recovery rate stands at 98.4%. Delhi government decides to impose night curfew from today Karnataka to also impose night curfew from tomorrow Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit Kanpur tomorrow also inaugurate the completed section of Kanpur metro rail project six naxals killed at Chhattisgarh Telangana border this morning Met department predicts wet spell across northwest central east India in the next 3 days and in cricket Heavy rain causes delay in the start of the play between India and South Africa on day 2 of first test match at Centurion. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, news about the new corona variant is a cause for concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and help others get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today inaugurated and laid the foundation stone for projects worth 11000 crore rupees including Dhola Sid Hydro Power and Renuka Dam projects at Mandi. Speaking at a public meeting in Mandi, Mr Modi said Himachal has played a major role in shaping his life journey. He congratulated all for being part of Himachal government's completion of four years of seva and siddhi. Now we take you live to the Prime Minister's address at Mandi in Himachal Pradesh. कल्याण की ही है। मैं जरा चाहूँगा देश के पंडितों से आग्रह करूँगा, जरा उन राज्यों का वैक्सीनेशन का रिकॉर्ड भी जरा देख लीजिए। उनका वैक्सीनेशन रिकॉर्ड भी इस बात का गवाह है कि उन्हें अपने राज्य के लोगों की चिंता नहीं है साथियों हमारी सरकार पूरी संवेदनशीलता के साथ सतर्कता के साथ आपकी हर आवश्यकता को ध्यान में रखते हुए निरंतर काम कर रही है अब सरकार ने तय किया है कि 15 से 18 साल के बच्चे बीच जो बच्चे हैं बेटे बेटियां हैं उनको भी 3 जनवरी सोमवार से वैक्सीन लगाना शुरू हो जाएगा 3 जनवरी सोमवार से अभियान शुरू होने वाला है मुझे विश्वास है हिमाचल प्रदेश इसमें भी शानदार काम करके दिखाएगा देश को दिशा देने का काम हिमाचल करके रहेगा हमारे जो हेल्थ सेक्टर के लोग हैं फ्रंटलाइन वर्कर है वो पिछले दो साल से कोरोना से लड़ाई में देश की एक बहुत बड़ी ताकत बने हुए हैं उन्हें भी 10 जनवरी से प्रिकॉशन डोज देने का काम शुरू होगा साठ साल से ऊपर के बुजुर्ग जिन्हें पहले से गंभीर बीमारियां हैं उन्हें भी डॉक्टरों की सलाह पर 
प्रिकॉशन डोज का विकल्प दिया गया है ये सारे प्रयास हिमाचल के लोगों को सुरक्षा कवच तो देंगे ही यहां के लिए जरूरी टूरिज्म सेक्टर को भी बचाने में और आगे बढ़ाने में ये बहुत मदद करेंगे Earlier at the function Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur said Prime Minister Modi has given a lot to Himachal Pradesh He said under his leadership AIMS PGI and many hospitals have been established in the state Mr Thakur congratulated Chief Minister Jairam Thakur on completing 4 years of government Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Jairam Thakur said Mandi is called Choti Kashi as there are more than 300 ancient temples The chief minister said the government is trying to develop Mandi on the same lines as UP's Kashi. He said Narendra Modi inaugurated the Atal Tunnel, Rohtang in 2020, and this tunnel has not only helped the locals but also attracted many tourists to the state. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan today briefed the election commission on the COVID-19 situation in states where assembly elections are scheduled to be held early next year. The health secretary on December 23rd directed the poll bound states to exponentially ramp up vaccination especially in the low coverage districts to protect the vulnerable population. In the backdrop of the highly infectious Omicron variant detected in several pockets of the country, the commission sought updates from Mr Bhushan on the COVID-19 situation and the emergence of Omicron variant. Mr Bhushan during the review meeting with all states also raised a red flag that pockets with low vaccination coverage may be more vulnerable to the new Omicron variant. and the district administrations have to pay special attention to ramp up vaccination in these pockets elections are expected in uttar pradesh punjab uttarakhand goa and manipur early next year the health ministry has sent multidisciplinary teams to uttar pradesh and punjab the teams will specifically look at five areas contact tracing including surveillance containment operations covid-19 testing including sending of adequate samples from clusters to insa cog network for genome sequencing home ministry has issued orders to all chief secretaries in the states and uts stressing the need for greater foresight data analysis dynamic decision making and strict and prompt containment actions at the local and district levels in view of the current covid situation home secretary ajay bhalla has written to all chief secretaries of states mr bhalla has urged the state governments to strictly enforce the norms of covid appropriate behavior Our correspondent reports the national directives for COVID-19 management to continue to be strictly followed throughout the country till 31st January next year. Over 141 crore 73 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. India's active case load currently stands at 75,841. The recovery rate is currently at 98.4%, which is the highest since March last year. over 7141 recoveries in the last 24 hours a total of 6531 new cases were reported in the last 24 hours over 67 crore 29 lakh total tests have been conducted so far children in the age group of 15 to 18 years will be able to register on the covin app for vaccination from 1st of january Covin platform chief Dr Arish Sharma said an additional 10th ID card for registration has been added as the student ID card because some might not have Aadhaar or other identity cards Dr Sharma said during the registration process it will ask whether any comorbidities or not if yes then they need to show the comorbidity certificate from a registered doctor at the vaccination center and then a person can get jabs Dr Sharma also said if someone is above 60 years of age and have taken both the doses and the gap between the second dose and the day of registering is more than 9 months then a person is eligible Government today said that more than 148 crore 37 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far Health ministry said that more than 17 crore 72 lakh unutilized covid vaccine doses are still available with the states UTs and private hospitals to be administered Karnataka government will impose a 10 day night curfew in the state from tomorrow as an attempt to control the spread of COVID-19 and its Omicron variant. The decision was taken in a high level meeting of top officials and technical committee members chaired by Chief Minister Basavraj Bombay in Bangalore yesterday. 
Addressing the media after the meeting, the State Health Minister Dr. Sudhakar said the night curfew will be imposed from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. for a period of 10 days. New Year celebrations will not be allowed in public places. Delhi government has decided to impose night curfew from today. The decision has been taken in view of increasing cases of COVID-19 in the city. The night curfew will be effective from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. A total of 290 new confirmed cases of coronavirus infection were reported in the national capital yesterday. Presently, the total number of active cases of COVID-19 in the national capital is 1,103. Talking to AIR News, Dr. Harsh Pemde of Lady Harding Medical College, New Delhi, welcomed the government's decision to allow booster dose for healthcare and frontline workers. भी एक अतिरिक्त डोज अगर सभी को मिल जाएगी तो कोविड से लड़ने में वो अधिक सक्षम हो जाएंगे ये तो बिल्कुल निश्चित है दूसरी ओर हम अगर अपने स्वास्थ्य कर्मियों को देखें तो उनको भी एक अतिरिक्त डोज की आवश्यकता है क्योंकि स्वास्थ्य कर्मी ज्यादा संपर्क में आते हैं कोविड के मरीजों के बार-बार संपर्क में आते हैं इसलिए स्वास्थ्य कर्मियों को भी एक तीसरी डोज लगाने का निर्णय किया गया है इससे इनकी प्रतिरोधक क्षमता और अधिक बढ़ेगी बच्चों को भी इसकी बहुत अधिक आवश्यकता है उनको तो कोविड की वैक्सीन अभी तक लगी नहीं है उनको भी स्कूल जाना है कॉलेज जाना है लगभग दो वर्ष से वो लोग अपने इस सारे जो बहुत सामान्य प्रक्रिया है उनके लिए स्कूल जाना कॉलेज जाना और उनके मानसिक स्वास्थ्य के लिए ये बहुत बहुत आवश्यक है जो हम नहीं कर पा रहे हैं तो उनको अगर हम वैक्सीन लगाएंगे तो उनमें भी कोविड की बीमारी होने का खतरा कम हो जाएगा और बहुत अधिक आत्मविश्वास के साथ वो स्कूल जा पाएंगे कॉलेज जा पाएंगे Wearing mask is very important in the fight against COVID. Doctors also believe that wearing mask not only gives you safety against corona, but also saves you from pollution and other infectious diseases. A report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other state governments are continuously appealing to the people to wear masks to save themselves from new COVID variant. Dr. Surya Kant, head of the TB chest department of King George Medical University, Lucknow, believes that mask is a big security cover against many diseases. तुरंत लगवा लें पहली लगवा ली है दूसरी डोज नहीं लगवाई है तो दूसरी डोज भी लगवा लें वैक्सीन लगवाने के बाद भी आपको कोविड एप्रोप्रिएट बिहेवियर को अपनाना है यानी मिलने पे नमस्ते करना है भीड़ से बचना है हाथ धोते रहना है दो गज की दूरी बना के रखना है और घर से बाहर निकलते ही मास्क लगा लें फॉर्मर आईटीएन संदीप पाटिल हु प्रोड्यूसर श्वासा एन95 मास्क इन एसोसिएशन विद आईआईटी कानपुर सेज दैट गुड फिल्ट्रेशन कैपेसिटी ऑफ द मास्क इज आल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू वियर मास्क ऑफ गुड क्वालिटी इन अ प्रॉपर manner when you go out sushil chandra tiwari air news lucknow in our bilingual live phone in program corona jagrukta series dr v k paul member niti aayog will be with us tonight to answer the queries related to coronavirus this program can be heard on fm gold channel and additional frequencies from 9:30 pm onwards listeners can ask questions to the expert on telephone number 0112341230 and 0112341764 you can also post your queries on our twitter handle at eir news alerts by hashtag ask eir this program will also be available on the website news on eir.gov.in and youtube channel news on eir official niti aayog today released the fourth edition of the healthy states progressive india report ranking states performance for the year 2019-20 Among the largest states Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Telangana have emerged among the best three performers in terms of overall performance. Uttar Pradesh has ranked at the top in terms of incremental performance by registering the highest incremental change from the base year 2018-19 to reference year 2019-20. Telangana has performed well both in terms of overall performance as well as incremental performance and secured the third position in both instances. At least six Maoists, including four women, killed in an exchange of fire between Telangana State Greyhound Special Party and Maoists at Doraguda near Pesra Pedu Police Station at Kistaran in Sukma District of Chhattisgarh, adjoining Telangana's Cherla Mandal. Police informed that the incident occurred early this morning. More details are awaited. However, the outlawed outfit's Cherla area militia commander is believed to be among the dead. You are listening to the midday news on All India Radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches hydro power projects worth over 11000 crore rupees in Mandi Himachal Pradesh 
Health Ministry briefs the Election Commission about COVID-19 situation ahead of polls in five states. Election Commission to be on a three-day visit to Uttar Pradesh beginning tomorrow. Children below 15 to 18 can register on COVID for vaccination from January 1st. Over 141 crore 73 lakh vaccine doses administered under nationwide vaccination drive so far. Recovery rate stands at 98.40%. Delhi government decides to impose night curfew from today. Karnataka to also impose night curfew from tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit Kanpur tomorrow. Also inaugurate the completed section of Kanpur Metro Rail Project. Six nuptials killed at Chhattisgarh's Telangana border this morning. Med Department predicts wet spell across northwest central East India in the next three days. And in cricket, heavy rain causes delay in the start of the play between India and South Africa on day two of the first test match at Centurion. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Kanpur tomorrow and inaugurate the completed section of Kanpur Metro Rail Project. During the program, the Prime Minister will also inaugurate the Bina Paki Multi-Product Pipeline Project. Prior to this, Mr. Modi will attend the 54th Convocation Ceremony of IIT Kanpur. The completed section of the Kanpur Metro Rail Project is 9-kilometer long section from IIT Kanpur to Moti Jhil. The Prime Minister will inspect the Kanpur Metro Rail Project and undertake a metro ride from IIT Metro Station to Geetanagar. The entire length of the Metro Rail Project in Kanpur is 32 kilometers and is being built at a cost of over 11,000 crore rupees. The Prime Minister will inaugurate the Bina Panki Multi-Product Pipeline Project also. The 356-kilometer-long project has a capacity of around 3.45 million metric ton per annum, extending from Bina Refinery in Madhya Pradesh to Panki in Kanpur. The project has been built at a cost of over 1,500 crore rupees. It will help the region access petroleum products from the Bina Refinery. Prime Minister will be the chief guest of the 54th Convocation of IIT Kanpur. During the convocation, all the students will be issued digital degrees through an in-house blockchain-driven technology developed at the Institute under the National Blockchain Project. The Prime Minister will launch the blockchain-based digital degrees. These digital degrees can be verified globally and are unforgeable. The Election Commission, led by Chief Election Commissioner Sushil Chandra, will be on a three-day visit to Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. The team will review the preparedness and arrangements for the upcoming Assembly elections in the state. After arrival in Lucknow tomorrow, the Election Commission will interact with the representatives of various political parties. On Wednesday, a complete review meeting will be held with the DGPs, the State Home Ministry officials and expenditure officials. There are 403 seats in UP State Assembly. The term of current assembly elected in 2017 will expire on the 14th of May 2022. Senior BJP leaders from Uttar Pradesh today called on pa party president J.P. Nadda in New Delhi. The meeting came in the wake of upcoming assembly elections in the state. During the meeting, the leaders showed their commitment to make BJP government again in UP. Punjab Lok Congress President Captain Amrinder Singh today met Union Home Minister Amit Shah and BJP Chief J.P. Nadda in New Delhi. Talking to reporters after the meeting, Punjab BJP in charge in Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat said, the party chief of BJP, Punjab Lok Congress and SAD Sanyukt, headed by Sukhdev Singh Dhinsa, held a meeting. He said it has been decided that a committee consisting of two members from each party will be formed to discuss the issues including seat sharing and the joint manifesto for the Punjab Assembly elections. The first three-day Kashi Indian International Film Festival will begin in Varanasi today evening. Festival will showcase glimpses of Indian classical music and dance and events on famous philosophers, poets, writers and musicians. 
സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ടൂറിസം കൾച്ചർ ആന്റ് ചാരിറ്റബിൾ അഫയേഴ്സ് മിനിസ്റ്റർ നീൽകണ്ഠ് തിവാരി വിൽ ഇനോഗുറേറ്റ് ദ ഫെസ്റ്റിവൽ വയൽ യൂണിയൻ ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ആന്റ് ബ്രോഡ്കാസ്റ്റിംഗ് മിനിസ്റ്റർ അനുരാഗ് ഠാക്കൂർ വിൽ ബി പ്രസന്റ് അറ്റ് ദ ഫെസ്റ്റിവൽ ഓൺ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് ഡേ This is All India Radio giving you the news for quick news updates around the clock follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav Hallmark ensures purity of gold always purchase Hallmark gold jewelry for any consumer related complaints please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll free number 14404 issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs Government of India Jago Grahak Jago And now let's listen to a special program Azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi ka safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed AIR News brings you a glimpse of this struggle every day On December the 27th 1911 the national anthem Jan Gan Man was first sung at the Calcutta session of the Congress it is the first stanza of the Bengali hymn Bharato Bhagyo Vidhata written by Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore Jan Gan Man was adopted as the country's national anthem by the Constituent Assembly of India on January the 24th 1950. Reverence to the national anthem is a fundamental duty in India. According to Article 51A of the Constitution, it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to abide by the constitution and respect its ideals and institutions, the national flag and the national anthem. We also remember freedom fighter Markan Singh who helped overthrow the British Empire by joining nationalist movements in two countries India the land of his birth and Kenya his adopted homeland He was born on 27th December 1913 in Gujrawala district of erstwhile Punjab at the age of 13 he moved with his family to Nairobi Kenya Markan Singh transcended the boundaries and made common cause with the African population of Kenya to take on the British. Kenya was also a center of the Ghadar party and Markan Singh, Gopal Singh Chandan and Vasudev Singh were its chief organizers. <laughs> In December 1939 Markan Singh left for India to study working class conditions and functioning of trade unionism in Bombay and Ahmedabad In India he addressed gatherings in Bombay and attended the Ramgarh session of the Indian National Congress as an African delegate Singh was arrested by the British and moved from one prison to another for the next 2 years without being charged On his release Singh's movement was restricted to his native village in Gujranwala for two and a half years finally in January 1945 he was set free after which he started working with the newspaper Jange Azadi as India was going to achieve independence on the 15th of August 1947 Singh left for Kenya <laughs> Nehru 
in Kenya. Singh organized the Kenya Youth Conference and became active as the General Secretary of the East African Trade Union Congress. Singh was detained by the colonial government in 1950. He remained behind bars during the famous Mau Mau Uprising of Kenya. He remained in prison for 12 years till 1961. Kenya attained independence in 1963 and Singh was granted permanent residency in the country. Markhan Singh remained committed to challenging the politics of indifference and segregation till the very end and had secured his place among great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela through his transnational struggle. We also remember social activist Punjab Rao Sham Rao Deshmukh, who was born on the 27th of December 1898. Popularly known as Bhau Sahib Deshmukh, he was associated with the Satya Shodhak Samaj of Mahatma Phule and did Satyagraha for the entry of the so-called untouchables into the Ambabai Temple, Amravati. Baba Sahib Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar supported him in this movement. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. In Spotlight, the New Services Division of All India Radio will bring the Year Ender Series exclusive interview tonight with Sri R.K. Singh, Union Minister of Power and New and Renewable Energy. In his interview, Mr. R.K. Singh informed about the achievements of the Ministry of Power and Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. He said both Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana and Saubhagya schemes were very successful. He added under these schemes more than 18,000 villages and hundreds of thousands of hamlets were connected to provide continuous power supply and 28 million homes were provided power. The interview can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.15 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.nic.in and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. Indian Meteorological Department, IMD, has forecast a wet spell across northwest, central and east India in the next three days. Delhi received light showers while moderate to heavy snowfall was reported in Kashmir and Sikkim. Several parts of the national capital witnessed light rains yesterday evening and last night. IMD has forecast light rainfall in Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, Delhi and Rajasthan till tomorrow. It is also predicted scattered to fairly widespread rain in Uttar Pradesh till Wednesday. Rainfall is also likely to occur in Madhya Pradesh, Vidarbha area of Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha and Gangetic West Bengal on Tuesday and Wednesday. The minimum temperature in most places in Kashmir settled below the freezing point. Weather office has forecast light to moderate snowfall in Kashmir to the next two days. A centurion heavy rain caused delay of the start of play of the day two of the first cricket test match between India and South Africa. However, it has stopped raining now. The super soppers are out to remove the water. India will resume the first innings from the overnight score of 272 for three wickets today of the first test of the three-match series. Opener KL Rahul and 122 and Ajinkar Han and 40 were the crease when stumps were drawn yesterday. Earlier India won the toss and opted to bat. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches hydropower projects worth over 11,000 crore rupees in Mandi, Himachal Pradesh. Health Ministry briefs Election Commission about COVID-19 situation ahead of polls in five states. Election Commission to be on a three-day visit to Uttar Pradesh beginning tomorrow. Children between 15 to 18 can register on COVID for vaccination from 1st of January. Over 141 crore 73 lakh vaccine doses administered under nationwide vaccination drive so far. Recovery rate stands at 98.4%. Delhi government decides to impose night curfew from today. Karnataka to also impose night curfew from tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit Kanpur tomorrow. Also inaugurate the completed section of Kanpur Metro Rail Project. Six Naxals killed at Chhattisgarh Telangana border this morning. Med Department predicts wet spell across northwest, central, east India in next three days. And in cricket, heavy rain causes delay in start of the play between India and South Africa 
on day two of the first test match at Centurion. And with that, we end the midday news.